what it means to watch. Guard your crown. Everybody talks about watching for the Lord's coming, watching the news, and watching Israel. But what we need to be watching as believers is the integrity of the gospel. Amen. That is the treasure that has been committed to us. That is the thing that the devil and the thieves want to come and take. Amen. When Jesus talked about being watchful and guarding and knowing the day, he said, And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. Luke 12, 39-40. Amen. Jesus places a lot of importance on our being confident in His coming and not shrinking back. Amen. In Revelation, He talks about coming upon the unwatchful as a thief. Revelation 3, 3. If therefore... You shall not watch. I will come on you as a thief, and you shall not know what hour I will come upon you. As I have pondered this and asked, is the Lord is really a thief? He speaks of a thief in the gospel. He says they come to kill, steal, and destroy. In John 10, He says, the thieves and the robbers are those who did not come in by the door, but came into the sheepfold through another way. Amen. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. John 10, 1. Amen. If we are believers, we came in by the Lord himself, who is the door. Amen. But there are some that seem to be in the sheepfold that didn't come in by him. He calls them thieves and robbers. They're here to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10. Amen. But the Lord came to give us life abundantly. It is hard for me to consider that the Lord would be a thief in the same sense that he used to describe the thieves entering the sheepfold. The sheepfold is not the same as the pasture. Amen. The sheepfold consists of people that are congregating around Jesus, but not all of them know him. Amen. His sheep know his voice, but there are strangers in the sheepfold. His sheep will eventually follow his voice into the pasture. But there are strangers in the sheepfold that desire to abuse them, steal from them, and rob them. (coughs) Sorry. In Revelation 3.11, we see an admonition to the church of Philadelphia. The Lord says, hold fast to what you have and let no man steal your crown. Amen. We are like good of the household. Excuse me. We are like good men of the house. Watching to make sure no one breaks into the house to steal a precious treasure. Matthew 24, 43. Amen. He is likening his coming to that of a thief and saying there is something precious to be guarded. Amen. John says in 1 John 2, 28. Now little children abide in him so that he, excuse me, so that when he comes, you may have confidence at his coming and not shrink back in shame. Amen. I believe this is the same concept. He says, abide in the Lord. I have an inner life and a charismatic, legalistic, and mystical background from which I've been saved. This is a problem because in my concept, abiding automatically becomes a mystical term. It means, or excuse me, it means you need to really be in the spirit and you need to constantly be in prayer and continually be in his presence and you need need to be doing all kinds of spiritual things that's not what john is talking about (laughs) 
This verse used to scare me because I thought it meant that if I didn't do all these things, I would have reason to be ashamed when the Lord came. Amen. Yeah, I think a lot of people did that or felt that way too. I know I was one of them too. Uh, praise God for the truth of <laughs> his word in context. <laughs> I read books about how, the, how to abide in the Lord that reinforced my negative concept. Or excuse me, I read books about how to abide in the Lord that reinforced my negative concept. The good news is that John defines what it means to abide in the Lord in the same chapter. Amen. He says, let that which you heard from the beginning abide in you. Amen. If that which you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will abide in the Father and in the Son. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. Um First, is it first John? I think it's first, uh, first John 2, 24. I could be wrong on that. I don't know. Um, John is talking about a message that you heard, the promise of eternal life. We need to guard this message. Four, four verses later, John tells us that we are to abide in him so that we may have confidence in his coming and not be ashamed. Amen. Abiding in the Lord means letting his gospel abide in us and not being moved away from it. Amen. Paul says in Colossians that we are to continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, not being moved away from the hope of the gospel. Colossians 1.23. I love that verse too. <coughs> Excuse me. There are thieves and robbers that have entered the sheepfold. Jesus said his sheep would hear his voice and would not hear the voice of, of the strangers, the thieves and the robbers. In other words, those thieves are speaking. The way they steal is to speak. The way you let your guard down and lose your treasure is to listen. Amen. Very, very important statement right there. The way you let your guard down and lose your treasure is to listen to them. I love that because that is so true. They are speaking against the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen. They get your eyes off the sim simple message you heard in the beginning. That is our crown and our salvation. Amen. The gospel is our salvation and our crown and our treasure. It is the only thing we have to hold on to, or hold on, have to hold on. Amen. As he comes, it becomes so much more important because people in the church, in large masses, are going to fall away from the faith. Faith is that message that we heard from the beginning. It is, it is becoming more and more important that we cling to that message and discern everything that would differ from it and discern any speaking that would carry us off as spoil from that message. Amen. Paul says, let no one take you captive, excuse me, let no one take you captive or carry you off as spoil according to his philosophy, empty deceit, the traditions of men, the elements of the world, and not according to Christ. Amen. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in, in him. Colossians 2, 8 and 9. Amen. How do you get completed in Christ? By hearing and believing the message. Paul says in the same book, as you received Christ the Lord, so walk in him. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Amen. How did he, excuse me, how did we, how did we receive him? By faith. How are we to walk in him? By hearing the word and believing him. Amen. Paul says he is able to present you without spot before his presence at his coming if you continue in the faith, rooted and grounded, and not being moved away from the hope of the gospel which was proclaimed to you. If you are caught up in something 
other than the gospel of Jesus Christ as a Christian, you are missing out on a present enjoyment in Christ. Amen. You cannot lose your salvation. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose for your justification, you cannot lose your salvation. Let me repeat that. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose for your justification, you cannot lose your salvation. You cannot unbelieve the message if you try. I've been led into all kinds of crazy things. I've backslidden horribly at time at different times. I've had all kinds of strange additions to the gospel, Christ plus this and that, but the unshakable foundation is that the spirit in me testifies that God raised Christ from the dead. Amen. At times I doubted I was saved, but if you sat me down and asked me if I believed that God sent Jesus to die for my sins, I could not deny it. Amen. If you asked me if he was raised from the dead, I could not deny it. Amen. Why? Because the Spirit is in me, bearing witness to me. 1 John 5, 6, 9 through, and 9 through 11. That witness is incorruptible, perpetual, and eternal. Amen. However, when it comes to the Lord's coming, he is coming with his reward. Revelation 22, 12. Amen. And I believe that if he comes upon you as a thief, it means you are not watchful. Revelation 3.3. 3. However, watching for his coming is not what we think it is. Amen. The key is to guard the crown and guard our confidence. And that confidence comes from the gospel. Amen. Contending for the gospel and not allowing anyone to mix anything else into it or carry us off away from it is the way we watch and abide in the Lord and is the source of our confidence and, or excuse me, source at our, I get it right, is the source of our confidence at his coming. Amen. <laughs> Gosh, oh, I'm struggling today. Sorry. Anyway. How many videos are there on YouTube about being ready for his coming, which are a backdoor to bring in a works message to bring you into bondage? Tons. How many videos about prophecy have brought you into condemnation and bondage because you have been fooled into looking into yourself for assurance rather than the message you have believed? Hi. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, we have to be careful. I don't think it's an accident that for 20 years I've been in church, I've been in churches, and yet I've not heard a clear message on how to be assured of your salvation. Amen. Ditto. I think it might have been common before I was saved, but since I've been saved, I've not heard a clear presentation of the gospel that shows not just how to get in the door but how to know you're actually in. We should be assured. Amen. The gospel is not only the source of assurance that we have been saved, but it is the source of assurance that we are complete in Christ and satisfying to God. Amen. Most people believe the gospel is just the message we heard in the beginning of our Christian life, but Paul said that the message is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and rose again or and rose from the dead according to the scriptures. The scriptures have a lot to say about the death and resurrection of Christ that also are for assurance in the areas of sanctification and reward. Amen. We don't begin our life by faith and then continue by works. Colossians 2, 6, and Galatians 3, 3. Amen. We are to proceed by faith, and that faith comes from a richer and fuller understanding of what Christ accomplished and secured for us. Amen. As we grow in the knowledge of him, that knowledge becomes our way, our truth, and our life. Amen. Through the knowledge of him and abundance 
entrance into the kingdom is ministered to us by Christ himself. 2 Peter 1, 8 through 11. 8 and 11. Amen. <coughs> the Lord wants to have a bride that is overjoyed at his coming because we know there is nothing keeping us from rejoicing in him. Amen. Not because we are confident in ourselves or track record, our history, or our flesh. Amen. Those who are really running toward him have rejected our own right. Those who are really running toward him have rejected our own righteousness and we have rejected every message and messenger that has tried to get us to fix our hope on our own righteousness. We have fixed our hope entirely on him. Amen. And that is who he is looking for that will not be ashamed at his coming. That is what the crown we are to guard. Amen. This book is divided into three sections. Christ is our righteousness, Christ is our sanctification, and Christ as our reward. These are curated messages from the channel edit edited for readability. I recommend strongly that if there is a verse reference, you look it up. Until we see something in the word for ourselves, we really have only heard about it secondhand. Amen. It was difficult to choose messages that fit together and decide what to leave out and what to include. I might do a second volume in the future. In the end, I tried to pick messages on each topic that would bring encouragement and also refreshing perspectives that the reader might not have considered before. Amen. 